low carbon based bipeds. I am Scott Rose and you are watching Explosions and Stuff. Today, for top 10 on the 10th, I'll be covering my top 10 guilty pleasure movies. But first, a word from our sponsors. The rules of this top 10 list, well, they're pretty simple. Rule number one, I have to have seen the movie. Obviously, if I haven't seen the movie, I can't put it on my top 10 list. Rule number two, only one movie per franchise. And really, that's just to keep everything fair. Rule number three, by guilty pleasure, these aren't movies that I'm ashamed to admit that I like. They're movies that are just objectively bad, but for some reason, I still enjoy them. And rule number four, this isn't about what's the best movie. This is about what's the most entertaining movie. Coming in at number 10, we have Dead and Deader. This movie stars Dean Cain in the lead role. It's a zombie movie, but I don't want to say too much about it because I will be reviewing this movie for my Halloween special. So I'm going to go into it in more detail in that in that video, in that review, but this is a fantastic movie. It's fun. I mean, it's obviously a bad movie, but I still enjoy watching it, and that's why Dead and Deader comes in at number 10. Coming in at number 9, we have Airplane vs. Volcano. This movie, it also stars Dean Cain. That's going to be kind of a running theme. I love Dean Cain's work, and he's just... It's, it's literally what this movie's, the title is. It's an airplane versus a volcano. This airplane gets trapped in this ring of volcanoes. It's trying to escape, but autopilot's on. And Dean Cain's trying to do the best he can while fighting the autopilot and keeping everyone on the plane alive. It's fantastic. It's entertaining. It's so much fun to watch. But it is horrible. The acting is really stiff and bad. It's just a tro The special effects are horrid. But it's so much fun to watch. It's so entertaining. It's a joy to watch. It's an asylum movie. So no, you got to know that going in. It's one of those movies where it's bad, but you got to know going in that it's a bad movie. And if you do know that, you will enjoy well, you that's well knowing it's a bad movie going in is your only chance of enjoying this movie. You're, if you're expecting some big blockbuster throwback or some big blockbuster picture, you will not have a good time. You will not enjoy this movie. You have to go in knowing that Airplane vs. Vo versus Volcano is a bad movie, and that's why it comes in at number 9. Coming in at number 8, we have Kickboxer 4. This is also a bad movie. All of these are bad movies. Why do I keep saying that? But anyway, I digress. This is a bad movie. The acting is really bad. The sound work is just... There are sounds that should be there, but aren't there. It's just bad and lazy, and the the lead villain's acting is just over-the-top and bad. Not like in a in like a laughable, funny, kind of over-the-top way, but the more of like... Why the hell is this guy the bad guy? He's not menacing. He doesn't feel like a bad guy. He's not a believable bad guy. He's just this weird guy with a bad accent trying to act. It's like they had a white guy and had him play an Asian guy. It just doesn't work. It doesn't fit. He was a horrible choice for the villain. And that's part of the reason why this movie is so much fun. It's about a martial arts tournament, but it's just, it's bad. And it's so much fun. It's one of those movies you just sit there and laugh at with your friends. I mean, they try to cover up. This is the first kickbox. well, I think the only kickboxer movie, at least out of all the ones I've seen, where they relied on nudity and boobs and sex scenes. But every one of them has had an R rating. And on the other one, they just counted on violence and killing people. In this one, they had actual sex scenes. You know they were scraping at the bottom of the barrel. You know that they knew this was a bad movie, and they were just trying to make it as marketable as possible. And that's why Kickboxer 4 comes in at number 8. Coming in at number 7, we have Thor, Hammer of the Gods. Now, this is quite possibly 
the black sheep of the list. As in, I genuinely don't know why I enjoy it. It is a horrible movie. The acting is subpar. The writing is crap. The special effects are absolutely garbage among some of the worst I've ever seen. The werewolves, you know, they're supposed to be werewolves, but they look more like rats. I mean, this is a horrible movie. It's a made-for-TV movie, and it's obviously a made-for-TV movie. The writing is garbage, the acting is bad, the, the special effects are horrible, but for some reason, I enjoy this movie. I mean, it, it, it's good for what it is. It's a made-for-TV movie, and it's good for a made-for-TV movie. But objectively speaking, this is not a good movie. I shouldn't even enjoy this movie, but I do. I really enjoy this movie. I've watched it so many times, I've lost count of how many times I've seen it. It's a horrible movie. But for some reason that I don't know, I enjoy Thor Hammer of the Gods. Like every other movie on this list, I know why I like it. I have no idea why I like Thor Hammer of the Gods. And that's why it comes in at number seven. Coming in at number six, we have Train to Fight. Now, this is one of those movies where I forgot the title of it, but I remembered what happened, and it was entertaining, and it was fun. I had to look at my previous reviews to figure out the name, because I have already reviewed this movie, and it's so much fun. The acting is just laughably horrible, like worse than soap opera acting. It's quite possibly the worst acting I've ever seen in my life. The writing in this movie is ridiculous, along with the dialogue, which is just atrocious. You watch this movie for the martial arts scenes. That's its redeeming quality. The martial arts scenes are top of the line and fantastic and gorgeous and beautiful. Everything else about this movie is crap. But this movie is so much fun. It's one of those movies... You watch it with your friends, you sit back, and you laugh at it. You make fun of it, you rip into it. It's kind of like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 thing with this movie. But it is so much fun to watch. I love this movie. It's so entertaining. It's so much fun. And the plot is meaningless. It doesn't need to have a plot. The story's just there to split up the time between the fights and the, and the martial arts scenes. I don't even care what it's about. Just great fight scenes. Way to go. And that's why Train to Fight comes in at number six. Coming in at number five, we have Miami Connection. Now, this is one of those first movies that I ever reviewed. I think it was in like the first ten that I ever did. So my video review of it is pretty crappy, although my opinion on it still stands. It's still the same, although my re video review is pretty crappy quality. But I digress. This is an amazingly horrible movie. Like, it's almost the definition of a so bad it's good movie. The acting and the writing. I mean, the dialogue in this movie, sometimes I have to wonder if there was even a script or they just had a scene where, like, hey, you two get on camera and yell at each other. Just yell and complain and fight and have an argument and just go with it. Here's the general idea. You want to fight about you got fired from his nightclub and you want he he wants his job back, but you want to, you want to you know, defend why you fired him. Go. Fight. Was there even a script? I don't know. It didn't seem like it, but it was so much fun. I mean, you had 35-year-olds trying to play college students, and it just didn't really work. It didn't make sense. It didn't fit. But this movie is so much fun to watch. You can't understand half the dialogue, but it's so much fun. You have to check out Miami Connection, and that is why it comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, we have Future Sport. This is another one starring Dean Cain. If you can't tell, I'm a fan of his. I really enjoy his work. He is one of those actors where no matter how bad the movie is, I love his performance in it. It's just so entertaining. And a lot of times it will save the entire movie. But this movie is so much fun. The writing is stupid. The special effects are garbage. The, the thing that really saved this movie for me, aside from Dean Cain being in it, is the sport of future sport. The game of future sport. Like, that's something I would watch on TV if there actually was a professional future sport league. 
I would be interested in watching that sport. It looks so entertaining. It's fast-paced. It's exciting. That's the reason why I even watched this movie. I own it. I've lost count of how many times I've seen this movie. I have it on VHS. I have a VHS tape of this movie, and I've been watching it for years because I've had this tape for years. I've had this tape since, I think, 04, so like 13 years, and I've been watching it that entire time. It is a fantastically entertaining movie. Yes, a lot of the acting is bad, with Wesley Snipes being the absolute worst acting in the movie. I mean, really, he just did a horrible job with his fake Jamaican accent that a lot of people accuse of being racist. But I said, I don't know, because I'm not going to make that accusation, because I don't do that kind of stuff. But I digress. Again, this is such an entertaining movie. Yes, the special effects are bad. Yes, a lot of times it doesn't make a lot of sense, because there's that notable difference where it was originally made for TV, but they threw some stuff in to give it an R rating on v on when they released it on video. And you notice that. I mean, it's blatantly obvious that they gave it, that they threw that stuff in to get it an R rating, because it was originally made for TV. That stuff is obvious. But that just adds to its charm of being a horrible movie that's entertaining. It's I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all times because it's so bad that it's entertaining and Dean Cain did a fantastic job at it. And that is why Future Sport comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, we have Killing. American style. Now, this movie was made by the same guy who made Samurai Cop, which is also a horrible movie. However, anyway, that's not relevant. Sam Killing American Style is fantastically entertaining. It's amazing. It's so much fun to watch. I mean, it is a bad movie, like all of these movies are. It, it is a horrible movie. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. But it's so entertaining. It's so much fun to watch. The acting is absolutely god-awful. Like, there's almost nothing redeeming about the acting in this movie. It's over the top. It's cheesy. It's ridiculous. It's stiff. And it's so much fun to watch. You don't go into this expecting a serious movie or even wanting to take this movie seriously. You have to go in knowing that this is a crappy movie, that it's garbage, and that the acting is god-awful. You have to go in knowing this. That's your only chance of enjoying this movie. And that is why Killing American Style comes in at number three. Coming in at number two, we have Deadly Prey. Now, this is one of those movies, again, it's just god-awful. But it's so genuine. These people tried their best. They tried to make a good action movie. They tried to make a fun and engaging and serious action movie. And it they failed gloriously. This is an awful movie. It's riddled with plot holes. It's riddled with crappy acting and horrible writing and just ridiculously stupid dialogue and just... Oh, there's so much wrong with this movie, but it is so gloriously amazing. I honestly think they should have renamed this movie Muscular Men with Mullets because most of the characters in this movie were muscular men and they had mullets and they were just flowing gloriously with their amazing mullets. It was fantastic. And there was one part where the guy, whenever something would blow up behind him, he'd be like, and flex my bus, my massive muscles and flex my biceps as I fall to my knees and then fall forward onto the ground. I mean, it was gloriously bad. It is a fun, entertaining movie, and thank God they tried to take it seriously because otherwise this movie would not have been nearly as bad beautiful as it turned out and that is why deadly prey comes in at number two and my number one guilty pleasure movie is day of the warrior let's be honest andy sedaris is quite possibly one of the kings of making what i consider to be guilty pleasure movies he is fantastic at it he's one of the best and th out of all of them this is quite possibly the one that is the biggest guilty pleasure for me. For one, it introduced my favorite character from all of his movies, 
And it's just so much fun. It's so bad, but it's so fantastic and glorious. The acting is ridiculously horrid. I mean, it's so laughably bad. The plot makes zero sense. I mean, this is coming from a guy who said that plot was one of the least important things of movies and that it didn't matter, it was unimportant. I mean, really, the writer of this movie said that plot was not important and that it took him two days to write an entire script. There's not a lot to this movie. It's about a bunch of attractive women shooting guns and blowing stuff up. It has a plot only because it has to to kind of facilitate the shooting of guns and the blowing up of stuff. And it's just so much fun. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And it's a horrible movie, but I absolutely love it. And that is why Day of the Warrior comes in at number one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel for new action movie reviews posted every week and top 10 lists posted on the 10th of every month. Also, if you have any recommendations for things you would like me to cover in the future, please leave them in the comments below and follow us on Twitter at explosions underscore TV. Thank you and have a nice day.